Good. <laughs> Simon, is Anna Maria also coming? Okay, we are getting project partners now. Hi, Helen. Good morning. Good morning, Helen. Good morning. Hello. Hello. I'm um, sorry for the slight delay. Yes, Anna Maria will also join us. No, it's okay. Uh, as long as one of you is present, it's okay. I didn't get a response on my mail, so I was a little bit worried. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I think we were a bit out of context because I didn't really know what the situation. Professor Dimowski is abroad and he just asked us to fill in. So we have a presentation, but I didn't know that we had to reply. So sorry. Oh, no, no, it's OK. It's OK. Uh, we are going to have discussion anyway uh, with most of the participants. Um, telling what are the outcomes of your project very shortly. And then we'd like to involve you in discussion and ask you for participation in the project in later stages. Uh, but uh, Anna and I started talking uh, beforehand that we don't collaborate enough, that we should be connected. It, it goes for a lot of issues, not only for active healthy aging. So <laughs> this is one of, of the of attempts to, to be more connected. Okay, so we have all the speakers. We can wait we maybe a few more minutes. Uh, I would start maybe after two minutes if somebody else is joining from the project, or then I would give the words to the the core, the leading coordinator of the project. Well, it seems that we are not going to have more, more participants. Exactly 15, as I anticipated. <laughs> Maybe somebody else will join us. But uh, Caroline, uh, I would just uh, welcome everyone. And I would like you to, 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 to welcome you and thank you for your presence for, the, uh, for this uh, webinar. And I would give the word to the leading partner of uh, this interesting uh, Senior Econnect project. Caroline, the floor is yours. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, we are very pleased to welcome you today for, for this workshop of uh, Senior Econnect project. I am Caroline West from uh, Eura Santé in Northern France. Um, and we are the leader of, of Senior Econnect project. And together with Alenka uh, Rosage, uh, we are going to, to moderate this workshop. Before um, introducing uh, how we will uh, do for this workshop, just let me remind you briefly uh, what is Senior Econnect project. So Senior Econnect is a Horizon Europe project started in, in July uh, 2022. Um, the objective of the project is to support the emergence and, and growth of silver economy ecosystems and also to reinforce their, their efficiency and interconnectivity. 
To do so, the project will go through two phases. The first one in which we are now uh, is meant to gather experiences uh, to analyze the state of the art of silver economy ecosystems and learn. And the second phase will be about um, drafting and preparing a joint action plan dealing with the um, development of silver economy ecosystem and increasing um, efficiency and innovation potential uh, of silver economy projects and innovators. And this action plan will be uh, drafted jointly uh, by all the um, partners of the project and will be implementing, implemented after the end of the project. We are six partners uh, in Signori Connect, um, Eura Santé in Northern France, Munster Technological University, Slovenian Innovation Hub, Galician Health Cluster, and also in Brussels, European Platform for Sports and Innovation, and European Network for Accessible Tourism. Today's working groups um, aims at gathering experience, ideas and feedbacks on two different themes. The, the, on the one hand, we have aging at home. Um, on the second hand, we have nutrition for seniors. And thanks to uh, the projects and experiences you are going to share today, we would like to better understand and to, to better um, prepare where Signori Connect could do its part. For example, by including um, propositions of actions into uh, the joint action plan that will be drafted um, at the end of this project. Uh, well, it was a very short intro introducing word. Um, I leave the floor again to, to Alenka because I, I don't know, Alenka, if you uh, introduced yourself and, um, and, and to start the, the tour de table um, before uh, getting into the subjects. Okay. Thank you, Caroline. <clears throat> uh, my name is Alenka Rojai. I am director of uh, Slovenian Innovation Hub, which is also coordinating uh, the health and medical part of uh, Slovenian strategy for smart specialization. Um, Slovenian Innovation Hub is also uh, accredited as a reference site for active healthy aging which means that we are, we are connecting the members of Quadruple Helix uh, in area of preparing better uh, environment and improving environment for, for the elderly. Um, we are, I'm greeting you again and uh, thanking you for uh, spending your time and your experience with us and uh, with the he helping us to prepare a better action plan and to work together um, before we started officially this meeting, we already discussed that we should be better connected. We should know better what uh, other parties uh, are doing. And uh, with a few more we webinars like this and collaboration within the project, uh, I hope we will do a small step into, into bringing the society into a little bit higher level. Um, in, I think we are doing uh, an important job with Senior Econnect project because uh, we are dealing with, uh, let's say, a healthy part of population. We know that people who need care and uh, they need uh, support and, and social care and health care uh, are not majority of older people. Some of older people are really very active. They'd like to travel. They'd like to spend their life as long as possible uh, in independent state. And uh, this project is dealing with this, connecting, um, proposing, and maybe in enabling uh, society, our communities uh, to prepare better environment, to prepare better conditions for, for, for um, people who are uh, who would like to stay more uh, more active. So thank you again and I would just uh, give now we go, we go um, toward the table to introduce 
our speakers and our participants. Uh, I would uh, maybe I would just go by the uh, how I see you on my on my screen, and I would give the floor to Anna Novak to shortly uh, introduce herself. Uh, one more thing: uh, this uh, webinar is going to be a little bit uh, a mixture of uh, presentation and discussion. Uh, in, I know webinars where people are just talking and discussing, and we know webinars where people have presentations. Uh, but in this case, uh, we have invited a participant, uh, Professor Stefan Carlson from, from Christian Stadt University, to give a very short presentation of what they do. And I think this is a very good model uh, on based on which we could then make discussions, improvements, and uh, uh, and uh, some additional uh, ideas and uh, all together come to a, to, a, to a good model. But now I would ask Anna to introduce herself. Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to meet you and thank you for inviting me. So I am a project manager at the Center for European Perspective from Slovenia. So our organization, we tend to primarily focus on either strategic communication, peace and security projects, and youth uh, focus projects. But we are also heavily involved in uh, regional projects, especially Danube region. So uh, one of the projects that we were involved was also DCARE Labs projects that I will be speaking about a bit later on. And just to give you some ideas what it was about. So basically we focused on uh, home care. So we focused on prevention, but also mostly it was on establishing social innovation labs in nine countries that would actually enable uh, peoples to have home care services and pro products that would enable people to stay at home. This is quickly just about. Okay. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, I would give the word to Katarina Papa Mikhail. Hello. Uh, I'm Katarina Papa Mikhail, and I'm I'm working for the ne European Network for Accessible Tourism. I'm uh, a, mo a board member, but I have a I'm an architect. My background is, and I have expertise on tourism, uh, accessible tourism. But also, I started my involvement in accessibility, so called, um, by working. I was working for thirty years in the social housing organization of Greece where we were designing uh, social housing, also adaptable housing. We were designing for all ages. So this is my background for this, uh, for this um, presentation today. I will speak about adaptable housing because I've been working on this project, on this subject for 30 years. And I had the opportunity to to, to exercise this expertise uh, by uh, being involved in the uh, Olympic Games and Paralympic Games 2004 in Athens, where I was in charge of the Paralympic uh, Village on the design and management. So I we applied this experience there and I will talk to you about it. Perfect, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I would give the word to Helen McGurk from our member from Cork, from Cork Island. Good morning from a very uh, sunny Cork city um, and uh, delighted to be here and, and very happy to be a member of this uh, project. Um, I uh, head up uh, the Hink Centre for Entrepreneurship Excellence, which uh, supports entrepreneurship in, in all its forms. Um, and my, my area of interest, particularly for this project, is uh, publishing in the area of um, uh, living well in place, you know, um, but also um, a, a recent publication on the awareness and opportunities for SMEs in this area um, to support older people to, you know, live um, very active well beyond um, the, the retirement age. So. Yeah, so very, very excited about this workshop. I like your discussion uh, format, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. I would invite uh, Alize Joseph Rose from uh, hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Alize Joseph Rose and I'm working at Eurasante with Caroline. 
Um, I am working on a project, uh, IPA project, and this is a showroom dedicated to the well uh, aging of the elderly at home, and uh, that's why I'm here with you today. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Now uh, I'm I'm picking ladies first. Uh, now we have uh, Petra Medved from Health Nutrition. Hi, hello to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Alenka, for inviting me. Uh, I'm actually representing today uh, the Chamber of Agriculture and Food Enterprises from Slovenia. Uh, but also I'm actually representing the Strategic Research Innovation Partnership for Sustainable Food Production. As uh, it was recognized in Slovenia within the smart specialization strategy that sustainable food production is also one of nine priority areas. So I'm happy to share today some of our knowledge experiences, but just to say a few words about myself and my background, I have a PhD uh, from food science and technology. So happy to share with you my experiences working 20 years at the chamber, but also with food companies uh, in dealing with these challenges also for different population groups in development of new food project, uh, new food products. So happy to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Professor Anna Maria Kajar, would you introduce yourself? Hello to everyone. Thank you for invitation. Yeah. Uh, me and Simon just got yesterday to your workshop, so uh, I'm very interested in what kind of webinar we'll develop today. Uh, I come from Faculty for Social Work. I work as a director for of nursing of nursing homes, two two nurse homes. Uh, at the Faculty of Social Work, I'm dealing with dementia, aging at home also, but more of the people not healthy, but who are who need some help, social care or, or health care. So my research area is quality management of nursing homes and also quality in integrated care and aging and dying at home. So the institutionalization in some way. Uh, this is a short presentation for me. I'm also working on NeuroCare project where there are colleagues from Kristianstadt University. Um, I saw that Stefan is coming from Kristianstadt. So hello. <laughs> thank you. Hello, thank you. Uh, I would ask Sara Oliveira from CSG. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, okay now. So I'm Sarah, I'm from the Galician Health Cluster and I work on the communication department and I'm also working on the Senior Econet project. And yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I go to uh, our speakers again. Uh, Simon Zollner. Yes, uh, thank you for the invitation also from my part. Um, I'm coming from the School of Economics and Business, University of Ljubljana. Uh, me and Anna Maria were working together or still are working on the C4 Care project uh, that is focused on social innovation for active and healthy aging. Um, so I think that it covers both topics, so aging at home and uh, one specific part of our action plan um, that our colleagues from Josef Stefan Institute are covering is also more correlated to nutrition at home. So maybe that's one aspect that we will try to present today. Um, as the project is finishing in May, we established a research center at the University of Ljubljana, again, for social innovation for active and healthy aging, where we would like to continue with such efforts also in the future. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Emiliano. Yeah, hello, my name is Emiliano De Ferrari. Uh, I'm board member of, of INAT and um, I was counting the years. It's 25 years now that I'm working on, on, on the field of, of accessible uh, tourism and accessibility, working uh, um, also on, on a lot on with social enterprises and social cooperatives in the in, in that uh, in that world. Um, 
But now in these uh, last years, I'm primarily working as project manager and project researcher for uh, a lot for, for the European Network of Accessible Tourism. And we have been dealing uh, a lot with the accessible tourism, but for all ages, uh, from uh, from uh, from um, uh, young people to 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 older people, and we have also uh, touched a lot aspects of the, the life of uh, of uh, older people in the various projects that we have uh, working worked on. Thank you, uh, Ivor. Would you introduce yourself? Hello. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Nice to be here. I'm the managing director of Inet, and um, I have a. Uh, we've been running ENAT for now since 2006, but uh, my background uh, goes further back to being a building researcher uh, where I worked in Denmark for 17 years in the Building Research uh, Institute where we were, where I was working on um, the design and evaluation of uh, housing for older people and uh, people with disabilities. Uh, so I've been familiar with this issues about the accessibility, which Katarina is going to talk about, I think. Um, and and I, I see this whole project, Senior EcoNet, as a very multidisciplinary uh, project, which is a, very much typified by this webinar today, where we're reaching across from from human health and nutrition and looking at the, the environments we, we live in and how, in, in many ways, all of this can support uh, an active and long life uh, um, and a good life. So thank you for, for inviting me to this event. Thank you. <clears throat> Before I give the word to, to Stefan, I would uh, ask two of my co-workers, our co-workers, Monica and uh, Mataya, to introduce themselves shortly. Hello to everyone. My name is uh, Monika Klemencic. I'm working with uh, Alenka and Mataya in Slovenian Innovation Hub and also in this project. Uh, my role is project management and financial finances for of the project. Uh, I hope to hear a wonderful discussion today and uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Mataj Bodin Zevnik. I'm also a part of Slovenian Innovation Hub team. I work closely with Alinka and Monika. My field of expertise is media and communication. So I hope to participate in this project supporting the communication and dissemination part. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to hear today's speakers. Thank you very much, Matea. <clears throat> and now I'm coming to the to introduce or to, to ask Professor uh, Stefan Carlson to introduce himself. I just need to tell you that I was, uh, I think he was guest on two or three of our webinars in the uh, in the role of reference site Slovenia for active healthy aging. And I was so much, I was very, very much impressed by their model, the model of southern uh, southern Sweden region. Um, and I thought that this was is so interesting that we would invite him to to our uh, to our project and uh, discuss with him um, and uh, also the continuation of the project, which probably ended some years ago, but now they are continuing working on it. And uh, it's it's really supporting uh, uh, people staying as long as possible to be in independent stage. So Professor Carlson, I would give you the word and ask you for short presentation. And afterwards we will have uh, discussions. Uh, you can share the screen. Everybody has the right to share the screen. And welcome and thank you again for taking time to be with us. Thank you so much, Alenka, and for your nice words. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, I, I will try to uh, try to try to fulfill your expectations <laughs> after your very. Um, nice words <laughs> uh, 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 I'm uh, Stefan Carlson and I'm a professor in uh, health uh, science at the Kristianstad University and um, uh, I, uh, I am involved in um, 
uh, actually free uh, projects about uh, preventive interventions to older people. And um, <clears throat> uh, I have uh, doctoral students who are doing uh, uh, preventive intervention about fall risk. And an other is about activities um, uh, with the group ex exercises for older people. But today I'm going to talk about uh, preventive um, home visits for seniors. And this is, uh, I am the leader of the project and um, the project has been uh, going on for uh, about seven years uh, out of this model. And uh, I will do a short presentation about the project or the project uh, program or the uh, model you can you can use uh, uh, which uh, concept you like. Uh, I will share my screen with a press a short presentation. So um, we see it. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I'm going great. to uh, have the full screen, hopefully. Uh, yes. Yes, I'm going to uh, um, have a presentation uh, uh, to explain what kind of intervention this uh, uh, model is uh, dealing with. And then I'm going to tell you about um, uh, other um, uh, connected projects to, uh, to this model and also a development of the model. And I'm also going to uh, show you some results or data from the questionnaire uh, about nutrition uh, specific. This is a collaboration program between seven municipalities in the south of uh, Sweden and, and also the region. Uh, 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 the county council and there are also a company involved and the company is uh, uh, running the digital um, a questionnaire and a database. Uh, and uh, it's also Kristianstad University. We are hosting the database in our university. And um, uh, we have uh, various purpose of the program. <clears throat> we want to develop a common uh, model for preventive home visits. So actually we have the same model in the um, uh, seven uh, municipalities. And uh, nowadays we have um, uh, two uh, more municipalities uh, who are in interested to uh, to um, join in our model. And we have a home visit service from the municipality. And we have a specific organization for those home visits. We have a, a special pr pr procedure in each uh, home visit. And uh, we are uh, in the home visits, we have a digital uh, questionnaire. And we do assessments uh, in the older person's home. And we are sending um, the uh, 
a fulfilled uh, questionnaire into the database in Kristianstad. And we are <coughs> approaching every uh, senior who are 77 years old in each municipality and they are offered a uh, home visits. It's um, it's voluntary to, to have uh, a home visit so it's up to the older people to decide. Uh, this program was uh, in it, in it, initiated in uh, 2015 and started in in the year after in 2016. And in the home visit, we have um, uh, corner pillars. Uh, the, the first one is community planning, the planning in, in the municipality. And, um, and, and the planning is based on the answers in the in the questionnaire we are we are uh, we are provided and other uh, important issue is this is 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 dissemination of information that uh, the older people are being in, informed about uh, uh, all the kind of uh, of of support and help the municipality could offer if it's if it's needed further on and uh, and the other corner pillar is uh, to st strengthening and the older person's aut autonomy uh, with health promotion and and this uh, is about to um, talk about um, a, a general healthy healthy lifestyle in in old age, and what kind of uh, measures uh, are being uh, being proper to uh, use. And uh, the other one is to prevent is, is prevention of morbidity. It's more about to to, uh, to, 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 to prevent uh, diseases upcoming. And, and this is a more um, uh, specific uh, counseling of uh, common, common diseases in old age. <clears throat> and it, it, it is also a discussion about um, uh, actual um, uh, health problems in the older person. And out of this uh, uh, general program, we have um, a uh, doctoral project upcoming. Uh, uh, so the doctoral um, uh, uh, have already started her education and this project will st start in this autumn. So, 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 so this is um, a, a complement to, to the general home visits and we will try to uh, try a sensor-based uh, screening of a fall risk uh, in in within uh, those home home visits for older persons, and, and we will uh, uh, screen about two hundred and fifty older people, and we are going to use <coughs> a measure called a snublo snublometer. It's a it's a Swedish uh, uh, in innovation it's a sensor you are putting on your on your leg and and this um, advice is uh, uh, I mean I mean device is measuring uh, uh, activity uh, pattern in the older, older person 
and um, and we will uh, uh, investigate um, the association bit between between subjective and objective uh, data regarding uh, fall risk because we have an instrument in the in the questionnaire which is measuring fall risk so we will uh, uh, compare uh, this uh, self-reported measure with this uh, uh, objective measure with uh, with a sensor and we will also uh, um, try to um, uh, have uh, investigate uh, uh, the prediction of falls further on we are going to follow up for one year and in addition we also want to um, explore uh, how it is as a uh, person to be uh, screened for a uh, fall risk so we are going to do interviews with the uh, older persons and also with the uh, home visitors how is it to be a home visitors and and provide a, a screening on older persons so this is an upcoming additional uh, uh, research project. Uh, another new for the uh, for the uh, for the preventive uh, home visits is to uh, have a, a risk assessment uh, out of the. A questionnaire out of the answers on the on the questions and we want to try to assess risk for mal malnutrition physical health health and well-being uh, falls sleep pain uh, cognition and padl and our uh, idea is that uh, when the home home visitor have um, asked all the questions in the questionnaire, the questionnaire will uh, will um, sum up and show the home home visitors if there are any any risks in uh, those uh, areas in in the older persons. So it's. Uh, uh, and then the home 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 visitors could could have a deeper dis a discussion with the older person about these or those issues. But this is, uh, and we're going to implement this kind of risk assessment in this autumn as well. And now I'm going to tell you about. Uh, about nutrition from our database and one and this is a sample of um, 1377 older person who have had a home home visit and um, they have been asked about the ap appetite uh, how it is compared to before and as you can see this uh, the persons are this it's all is it's all almost the same uh, but there are some uh, about eight percent who are telling about it that the app appetite is uh, worse uh, another question is about involuntary weight loss and uh, and most of the persons have have no weight loss but about uh, more than uh, more than 10 percent are, are telling about weight loss and uh, another question is about difficulty in eating 
and as you can see that most of all have uh, could eat with no problems so it's not a big issue and uh, another question is about the number of uh, meals per day uh, about 90 percent are eating three meals per day but uh, there are about 10 percent who are only eating two meals per day so this could be an um, observation to do to pre to prevent uh, malnutrition and uh, uh, and most of the people are eating with 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 something, someone else, or another person in the in the household, but about a third of the older persons are eating 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 alone at home. Yes, and we have also measured the body mass index, and. Um, um, most of the older person have a, a normal BMI, but there are as, uh, some uh, thirteen percent who are uh, in in the measure are at 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 risk for malnutrition, and it means it's uh, under under um, less than twenty two on a on the BMI scale. So uh, there are some um, observations and uh, awareness about this, I would say. So this is my short presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, thank you. And, and before um, having maybe a um, few minutes for questions and comments, I would like to invite uh, Alize Joseph Rose to to speak uh, very quickly about um, the HIPAA project, and um, because she has um, uh, another meeting just after, so um, would like to invite her to to speak. Uh, briefly uh, and then left us, yes. us for example. Yes, uh, thank you, Caroline. Sorry, so I can't uh, stay all the all the all the time. So I just uh, present you quickly. Uh, IPA. So this is a project. Uh, no, so this is a, a showroom, like a, a model apart, dedicated to the well uh, aging uh, of the elderly at home. So what is this? Uh, so this is a flat uh, with, uh, which is open to the public, professional or private public, and offered them to discover some technical and technological innovation that helping the elderly at home. So uh, individual or group visits are organized during the year by uh, a host, and uh, will present each solution and its interest for the visitor. And uh, for us, for this experimentation, the, the challenge is uh, to reach the elderly because uh, a lot of um, professionals uh, visit this showroom, but not so many uh, elderly. Uh, why so we think about the, the fact this is technology technology, innovation technology. So maybe they are uh, afraid of it, um, but the main, uh, our goal in this project is just is uh, to acculturate uh, this public with uh, this uh, technology. Uh, another difficulties for us, maybe it's uh, to move uh, in uh, this flat uh, because for elderly, this is not um, even easy to move uh, outside uh, our home. So we are develop, developed a virtual system to visit our showroom from home. 
So we, you can uh, visit our site website and we will see uh, uh, this. And uh, we, we have an, another challenge is to finance innovation. Uh, indeed, the price of uh, this is break to obtain a new technical aid for this, uh, this public. Uh, and this is a big uh, subject. Maybe some subvention could change business model or help people to procure this project. But this is a, a big question for us, how to uh, obtain this uh, new um, I think there may I say a question. If you are sharing your screen, we don't see it. Yes, sorry. You have permission to share the screen, but we did not see it. Uh, so I would you ask you, yeah, on. I would, yeah, I would ask you to send us presentation and we can add it later on. Um, okay, uh, but, but I, um, I don't uh, I don't have a presentation. Oh, oh, then it's okay. Then it's okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. sorry. I, I didn't no, see your picture, so I thought. Okay, I'm sorry for interruption. No. Sorry. Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. So yeah, this is uh, our three, three challenge for us uh, in uh, on this project. Thank you, Alize. Um, maybe we can take a first round of comments or, or questions uh, from participants for uh, Alize or for um, Dr. Carlson. And Alize, you are free to, to leave us and I, I, I can try to answer questions because I, yes. I know a little bit of your project myself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Yes, Ivor. Hello, thank you. Uh, I was very interested to hear about uh, Stefan Carlson's um, uh, research. We have this uh, issue, or you picked on, up on an issue of how intrusive the um, the care, uh, the, no, the the sensors are in the home. Uh, if sens sensors are being used, is this intrusive for the the older people? Is that right? And, and I think that's a very interesting angle um, to have the feeling that you're being watched or monitored. Uh, and I wondered what you, you had to say about that. Thank you very much for the question. Yes, it, it, it's, very, it's, it's a very interesting question. And we actually are going to ask the older person about this, how it is to be monitor and and screened at home with a with a with a with a sensor is it um, uh, what kind of issues are are they, are, are they going to um, are they going to tell us about so this is very interesting i think so too yes because we 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 also in uh, Sweden have um, have uh, cameras at home. Uh, we call them uh, safety cameras. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> but it's uh, a voluntary for the person who who wants to have a. A, a camera at home and actually the camera is not open all the time uh, uh, the, the older person and uh, and the nursing staff are having an agreement in what time they are opening the camera <clears throat> and for how, how long time it almost uh, is about five minutes at uh, two o'clock in the night perhaps for, for for example so so but we will ask the uh, both the older person uh, who have used this uh, sensor uh, uh, device and we're also going to ask the home visitors how it is to s screen older persons with a sensor yes mm. Thank you, because I think it's interesting to to reflect on the efficacy of the person, the feeling of that they are in charge and they're in control, and also 
of course, that this is connected to their feeling of autonomy. But that was just a, a, a side remark, really. Thank you. And we have another question from Ellen McGurk. Good morning, Stefan. Very interesting um, and great to see um, the, your PhD coming on board and uh, hopefully um, more, more publications because that's, that's how we add to knowledge and, and our understanding in this area. Um, so uh, I really look forward and I'm writing plenty of notes here. Um, one question, um, I, I think it comes from where, where we're located um, in, in the southwest of Ireland. Um, do you have any comments on um, how your technology and, and this um, monitoring um, will support people to live at home in more remote, and I know Sweden has many remote areas, um, and at the peripheral away from the cities? Have, have you looked at that and, and the impact it has in people staying in their own communities. Thanks. Uh, your question was, um, if this uh, uh, intervention could uh, mean that older people could, st could, could stay at home longer also in the, in the rural areas. Yes, perhaps because yes. The, it could <clears throat> it could imply um, a kind of experience of um, safety to to um, to be at home and uh, knowing that I can manage, I can um, I can provide uh, activities of daily living and so on. So uh, yes, perhaps. Um, but, uh, so, mm, it just it would be interesting to uh, see uh, part of the survey or part of the experiment uh, uh, people trying it would be from peripheral um, and remote areas. Perhaps that would give you some nice mm. data. Yes, um, ju not just the cities where you know m many would say um, that they have. Um, access um, to, to, to care and to uh, monitoring uh, in a different, you know, in far uh, remoter areas. Um, but mm. yeah, okay. Thank you. Mm. Thanks. Yes, Alenka. <laughs> Just a short remark. In Slovenia, it is easier to be old in the country than in town because you have neighbors, they help you, you know each other. Uh, it's easier, uh, but in the, in the in town, you have a lot of neighbors whom you probably don't know and you are alone in your apartment. So these home visits are, I think, very welcome. Thank you. One last question or comment? Um, if not, I would like to invite Katerina um, from INAT to, to speak about the benefits of adaptable housing. This Katerina. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll try and share my screen. Um, okay. So, um, is that okay? You can see? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll try and talk about my experience and about uh, the adaptable, the benefits of adaptable housing, or we call lifetime homes for aging at home. That's about me. I, I just introduced myself. Uh, the only thing I didn't mention is that I have been also a member of the project team for the development of the European, the new European standard 17210, uh, developed by SEN, accessibility and usability of the built environment, which also refers to adaptable housing. And I consider this a very important issue, European uh, Union recognizing the importance of aging at home. So what are adaptable homes? And why do we need them? 
uh, dwellings play a fundamental role in everyone's life. And residents, of course, can have different characteristics and their needs typically change differently and develop throughout their lifetime, placing various demands on the home. We are all different, but we all have similar basic needs, which of course change throughout the life cycle. Over time, homes must accommodate all the functions and demands of growing families with residents of different ages and abilities. As the residents get older, they are very likely to acquire age-related impairments, and that's very common, all health conditions. So they need a house which is suitably designed to cater for their changing needs. So what they need is what we say adaptable and adaptable home. Surprisingly, the great majority of houses and apartments do not respond to this residence changing requirements. And I just show you some of the typical problems in existing housing, not accessible entrances, stairs at the, the entrances, stairs in the house, in, in houses that are two dwelling houses or multi-story houses, and not suitable layout, narrow bathrooms, with not enough space, when people require more space, when they get um, an impairment or an accident when they live there. So adaptive how a well-designed adaptable home can make really the difference between staying in place in comfort and safety when you get older or just being forced to leave. Adaptable homes meet the needs. They're designed to meet the needs of all users of all ages at every stage of their lives, ensuring quality and comfort, offering safety to users of all ages, and that's a very important aspect. They're designed to prevent accidents within an accessible, resident-friendly environment in an accessible neighborhood, allowing independence and autonomy because people, they have still to be independent and use their devices, use their house, live there in comfort. Instead of people adapting to the restriction of the housing, the housing is designed to be easily adapted to suit the changing needs of people. And of course, basic supporting home-based care of seniors. Europeans are living longer leading to an increased demand for care. So adaptable by providing and developing adaptable housing, we're reducing the needs for institutional care, benefiting national health systems, families, and individuals. Adaptable homes provide possibilities for care workers to assist with activities of daily living. Also, some treatments and therapies can take place in the home environment which is can, may be provided by a family member, care assistant, or visiting nurse. The concept of adaptable housing was initially developed in the UK under the term lifetime homes in the early 1990s by a group of housing experts, including Habitat Association, Housing Association, and Joseph Roundtree Foundation. It's about ordinary houses following 16 design criteria and based on the principles of universal design, which is the design of products and environments that can be used by all people to the greatest extent possible without the need of adaptations or specialized design. So mostly the house is there designed to suit everybody's needs but not specially adapted. It allows, as I will say a bit uh, in the following slides, it allows adaptations for specific situations. They can be built and adapted easily and at minimal cost. That's also very important. Many local authorities in UK have incorporated lifetime homes requirements into their housing policy. And that's the important message. 
adaptable lifetime homes fulfill some basic accessibility requirements, but are not necessarily adapted from the start. Lifetime homes are all about flexibility and adaptability. They are not a special kind of homes, but are thoughtfully designed to create and encourage better living environments for everyone, from raising small children that they need safety and comfort, to coping with illness or dealing with reduced mobility in later life, lifetime homes make the ups and downs of daily living easier to manage. This is a quote from Center of Accessible Environments. And that's the main, main message. Adaptive homes are designed, as I said, following basic principles to ensure comfort and safety of all users and with flexibility in mind, so they can easily be altered late, at a later stage when and if needed. This means knowledge of different users' access requirements. For example, with spacious doors and corridors that allow easy circulation, because maybe getting older or maybe having an accident, Users might need wheelchair or might need walking sticks, walking devices, and they need more space to move around. With sitting areas that allow comfortable movement. With a kitchen area that can easily be used by everyone or can be adapted. And here you see the working surface and underneath the cupboards can be movable so they can be adjusted and allow space for people that they might need a wheelchair to move around, use the kitchen area independently and work there. And with bathrooms with reinforced walls that allow the attachment of support grab rails. That, and that is an important thing when we develop an adaptable and build an adaptable housing. The walls should be reinforced for a later installment of grab rails if somebody needs that and be, become sort of disabled. And with dimensions and layout that allows the movement of a wheelchair user or also space for the helper. The basic design principles. As I said, the recently published European standard EN 17210 published in 2021 Accessibility and usability of the built environment, functional requirements, refers to adaptive housing, describing the basic requirements and recommendations, which are very similar to the lifetime homes 16 design criteria. Basic requirements include accessible parking space. We have to reach there and park our car to get into the house. Level access from the parking area to the house. Entrances level, illuminated and covered, sheltered from weather conditions. Accessible lifts or space to install a stair lift in multi-story dwellings. This might become a need at a later stage of life. Spacious doors with no thresholds and spacious corridors. Circulation space for which are accessibility in all rooms and possibility for bedroom at the entrance level in multi-story dwellings, that's an important aspect of lifetime homes because maybe in multi-story uh, dwellings or two-story dwellings, the bedrooms are upstairs. So we need to foresee for the need to have somebody have to, to, be, to have a bedroom in the uh, entrance level. And also the same, for a WC with shower at the entrance level, if somebody cannot be easily uh, move around the house and go upstairs to the second floor. Bathroom layout and plumbing to allow changes. As I said, the reinforced walls for fastening grab rails, but also the layout should allow of changes. And here you can see a picture that's from the official uh, drawings of the Paralympic village in 2004. The bathroom was designed, when you see um, the, here the, the, the shower area, that was originally designed with a bathtub. But for the houses in the Paralympic village, 
The bathtub was not installed from the beginning. This was a shower. We also um, foreseen the situation to, to put the door opening on the outwards, so it allows more space. So this was the design the, of the adaptable housing, which could be also uh, take also the, the toilet, the grab rails. And at a later stage, when this housing estate was given back to residents with no uh, need for, um, for um, having accessible bathrooms, it could be easily uh, converted into a bathroom with a bathtub and so on. So that's the concept of designing an adaptable bathroom, adaptable housing. A, a second point, as I said before, kitchen designed to allow adjust adjustment to fittings, installation and cupboards, as I explained. Switches, controls, accessories at suitable height and easy to use and reach. Color contrast and not reflective surfaces to facilitate persons with visual impairments and level access also to outdoor spaces, gardens, terraces, and balconies. That's also crucial, especially in houses uh, with gardens and in houses in Mediterranean countries that we have lots of balconies and spend a lot of time outdoors. So summing up, adaptable homes are homes of today with a view to the future. Yesterday's children becomes today's adults and tomorrow's seniors. Homes, these are homes designed with care and ideal homes for families, serve the ever-changing needs of the residents, avoiding a change of residence or relocation, which is a very hard thing for get, when getting older, ensure autonomy, comfort and quality of life, can be visited by everyone. That's also a very important thing because parents, they visit also their children. And also these houses should be easy to visit. Enable the elderly to maintain their social sociability in contact with friends and the local community and prevent the isolation and cost of caring for the elderly in institutions. Lastly, I want to say, since lifetime homes are so, have so many benefits, why they're not so common? Because there's a lack of education and awareness of architects and designers. There's a lack of understanding of changing user needs throughout the lifespan. And also policymakers fail to include adaptability in building policies and regulations, which would allow more seniors to age at home and remain active longer, thanks to a supportive home environment. These are very basic and we have to work on this. So my message is let us work together to highlight the benefits of adaptable housing and promote this best practice in the Senior Econnect ecosystem across Europe. Thank you very much for listening. I'll stop sharing. Um, thank you, Katarina. Thank you. Um, Any reaction, question, comments? Uh, stop sharing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Walenka, let's move on. Okay, thank you. Anna has a question. No, it's not actually a question. I would actually like to thank uh, Ms. Katarina because she presented an issue that I'm more and more aware of because my grandmother is getting older and, you, and I worked as a student in a hospital and one thing came up. So they were uh, renovating the hospital and the architect that was doing the renovations in a hospital did not know how to work in a hospital. So the rooms are too small for newer beds. The sinks are too high and people with wheelchairs cannot reach them. So yes, the lack of awareness and education in architects is actually horrifying. So yeah, just thank you for your presentation and all your work because it's extremely important, but people don't know it enough. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, yes, I think so. And you know, we've made a study, and it is it is amazing that all architects in Europe, in all the universities, even in the United States, when they have this ADA, which is also very strong there, they don't get this education, is, is optional, the course. And that's very, very important. This is still something that we have to fight for, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Katerina. I think Helen has a question. I, oh, hi. My, oh, uh, oh, from before? No, 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 no. My camera is not working. Apologies. Um, I've just noticed that. Um, Katerina, uh, absolutely fascinating uh, presentation. And, and thank you so much. Again, highlighting um, what we need to do um, for all of us, that if we're privileged enough um, to be in that category uh, eventually. Um, just on the awareness, um, and, and you just kind of answered it about the education side of it. Um, are there any uh, policies around education um, uh, in this uh, to uh, educate educators, if you like, in the area of build, architecture, uh, interior design? Um, so that's one, not question, but just observation. And the other one is awareness um, for SMEs of this of the opportunities to to uh, tap into this huge area of of adaptive housing, and I like your uh, lifetime homes. Thank you. Uh, well, um, you know, they, uh, I think uh, worldwide and the European uh, Commission has realised the importance of this matter, and I think this is also there are so many European projects on this. Uh, and I, but I think the legislation uh, should be um, um, and, enforced. I mean, in Greece, for example, we have um, um, included adaptable housing concept in our legislation, but there's no education as such to, to make it happen because it's not enough to have legislation and standardization if you don't know why if you're not trained to understand why this is important and how to implement it. This is what is missing, this, this connection. I mean, I said also about this European standard, uh, the new European standard, which is very important. And in this standard, we tried in every clause to have um, a, an introduction of explaining the importance, because for us, it, it was very, very important to explain the why. If you don't understand why and how, you can never make it correct. And this is what we're missing. And I think it should be a European policy that all universities of um, the, the courses for architects and planners, they should have not an optional course, but it should be part of the curricula. Otherwise, we can't really um, um, achieve a good result because there will still be massive numbers of architects that they don't know how to design and how possibly to reach in every project and pass on this knowledge. So this is something that we have to, to really highlight the need of, of uh, education on, on this level. That's so true. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you very much, Katerina. It was very interesting and very needed. And I'm glad that we are using the tool of Senior Econnect project to go through. But I think this should come into legislation, definitely, and education, of course. Thank you. you know, the, raising the awareness of importance is, is, is really, uh, as you said, why the things are doing. So maybe we move on now to a different uh, topic, to nutrition, healthy nutrition for the elderly. It goes into hand in hand with a nice ho home and safe housing. And also, as, as Stefan already said before, people are maybe, uh, they don't use their nutrition correctly or it, nutrition should be changed with the years. And uh, I will give the word to Petra, who is working in the Strategic Research Innovation Partnership, Healthy Food. As she said, one of the priorities of smart specialization uh, also in Slovenia. 
Petra, yeah. the floor is yours. Thank you. Th thank you, Alenka. It's so far I'm just listening. Why? Because I'm learning. But at the end of the day, everything what you already said before me, it's so logical. We just need to put those things in practice. And it is about legislation. It is about the guidelines. But we will be there in a few years. Uh, and and uh, listening to you, it's really inspiring. But adding those things to the curricula, I think, it's all about education. And it is also something we are struggling on the nutrition part. We need to be aware of those things. So it is something young people need to learn that it is uh, very important to adapt to all stages of, of, of our uh, lifetime. So thank you very much to all the, the speakers so far. I will try to be very quickly, but I would like to first give you like an overview how we do position the nutrition part within the sustainable food production because as i already mentioned we are working on a daily basis with the food producing companies and it is so important to be aware of the trends of the consumer expectations and needs and the, 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 the aging population, it's so important from the beginning, because when we are developing new food products, we need to consider the needs and expectations of all kinds of population groups. So I will just try to share my screen to give you a, a, a quick overview of the, I hope you, you see my slides. Yeah, it's okay. Perfect. Thank you. I'll just try to put it uh, yeah, like this. So it is uh, the sustainable food production, a priority area of smart specialization. We have been struggling a lot. It is about constructing new villages, new cities. It is about uh, sustainable transportation. It is about sustainable aging uh, and healthy aging, but it is also about food because also Professor Carlson mentioned Nutrition is an important part of healthy aging. And uh, how we are dealing with it, uh, it is important from our part and our consideration that it is a strategy behind. Why? Because if we have a strategy, then we have the action plan and then we can actually implement uh, a theoretical part and we can really work on concrete pilot projects also when talking about developing new food products. And um, Alenka knows very well because we are collaborating a lot with uh, health and medicine, SRIP, and it is about long-term partnerships. We can do really small steps today, but on a long-term basis because we need to see results, we need to see development uh, in the forecoming years. From the point of view of uh, uh, strategic uh, research innovation partnerships is about giving an importance to value chains. And it is also within the food, food production, uh, primary, but also processing, so food processing. And as you can see, our main focus areas are, and will be also in the future, sustainable production and processing of functional foods. Petra, you want to move your slides, I guess. I'm moving my slides. I hope you we can... see only the first slide. Oh, so sorry. Okay, you... now it's okay. okay. Yeah, now it's okay. I will, Good. I will, I will leave it like this so the slides are moving uh, together with me and, and my <laughs> speaking. Thank you, Alenka. So it is about sustainable production and processing of functional foods. And we will consider lately during uh, the discussion, yes, nutrition needs are changing. And we do need different nutrition intake when we are children, then the, we are elder and we are adult or we are actually um, individuals. And I think it is all about changing and adapting to individual needs also when it comes to nutrition intake. And of course, our main focus will be also on technologies for sustainable plant and livestock production. <clears throat> we would like in Slovenia, at least we are discussing a lot, and I think also some other uh, countries, 
it is all about keeping and try to be self-sufficient when it comes to food production. Uh, you need to know how the agricultural part is working, how consumer is moving ahead with these new technologies, because I hope you have heard already about the, the neophobia. And neophobia is something very important to consider because we can develop any kind of new innovative food products when it comes to the consumer at the end of the day, he or she will say, no, I don't want to buy this food or, or I, I, will, I will buy because I'm open to innovative food products. So we need to consider the consumer and we cannot only introduce innovative techniques or, or technologies. I'm pretty sure you have heard about nanotechnology or the GMO. Uh, so you using genetically modified organisms in food production. It is something that is happening, but we need to consider all the advantages, opportunities, and of course, also risks. So we will try to focus uh, within this trip. Uh, also, when it comes to nutrition, organic food, local food, short supply chains, uh, and it is all about adapting to the needs of the final consumer. You will see here that we identify some important uh, uh, value chains, uh, okay, beer is also included, but from the point of view of seniors, of course, it is about the dairy, the meat, the grains, the fruit, the vegetables, because it is a very important, these are the very important source of nutrients for aging population, for sure. Um, Srip Krana, Srip food, uh, if you like uh, me to translate this wording, it is a partnership. You, you see that we are discussing a lot with the branch organization, universities, several different kinds of faculties, research institutions, but also all the other important stakeholders when it comes to uh, all these topics I mentioned so far. In the past five years, we have been focusing on new projects, markets, products, of course, raising our competencies and skills, but also those of the people working within the food processing industry. And we are trying to be part of several new networks. So this is why we have been visiting a lot, fairs, uh, events, a research institution, try to find good connection with all these stakeholders uh, by encouraging also the exchange of good practices, but also promoting innovations in business. Uh, and of course, it is all about dissemination, but we have heard today, it is also about learning. And we need to focus also on curriculas within universities, within faculties. Um, and this, I think, is for the future very, very important. Petra, so, sorry, can you focus on nutrition for elderly a little bit more? I need to give you the broader overview because okay. nutrition and sensory, at the end of the day, it is all about also public procurement. Why? You know that food is entering the public um, uh, institution through the public procurement. And we are focusing a lot that also the aging houses are actually ordering a very specific food for this kind of population. So by developing this tool now, food is much more healthier within the aging houses. And this is for Slovenia a good step forward, but also sensory, uh, because Alenka really uh, Institutions, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but sensory evaluation, why it is important? It is a very good food. At the end of the day, if the elderly people are not going to eat it and they will leave it on the, the plate, it is not something we have achieved a lot. So. It is about sensory evaluation of these new products entering and being prepared or developed for uh, aging population. So from my side, this is the broader overview of what we are dealing and all the topics we are dealing. But from our point of view, it's very important to know the nutrition policy. And Slovenia has a strategic policy document a nutrition policy document and strategy 
with the strategic goals. And elderly population is very important because we know statistics are raising. People are getting old and we need to assure a quality and safety and uh, new products for these people. And we need to adapt the composition, so nutritional composition. It is a big challenge. We need to know which kind of nutrition, um, nutrients uh, elderly people need to intake or to raise the intake. We need to know uh, their lifestyle. It is not only about nutrition, it's also keeping and adding years to life of uh, our population. So we are really focusing on developing new food products for this part of population. And uh, by saying this, uh, I'm open for discussion because uh, we can discuss a lot about nutrition for several hours, but it seems we have lack of time. So happy to answer your question if you have any. Thank you very much, Petra. Uh, we are sure going to invite you to collaborate in our SWOT analysis uh, and other uh, surveys. I think this is a very good uh, uh, topic to tackle. Uh, are there any questions? Comments? Okay. Um, then I will invite uh, Anna Novak from Center for European Perspective to tell us uh, how they are connecting and uh, spreading the good innovation and uh, how do you want to take care of uh, elderly? Sorry, but I I have to leave. Have to leave. So, uh, so thank you thank very you. much for today. Thank and, you very uh, much. And hopefully we can have some collaboration for all. Thank so you very much. I hope so also yeah. and yeah. Uh, keep you in the loop. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Anna, please. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we were involved in the Decare Labs project, with, which was financed under the Danube Transnational Program. And it ran for two years until December 2022. Now, in the project, we established uh, nine sustainable uh, regional innovation labs, which were basically uh, working as a possibility to create you know, innovative home care uh, services and products. And they basically offered social entrepreneurs, mostly these were either individuals or startups or people from social service sector. We also had intrapreneurs. So basically uh, these were uh, working within an organization. So from Caritas Vienna. Uh, so these were groups of entrepreneurs. And these regional labs offered them a space for developing uh, practical and marketable solutions. And these spaces, of course, also offered uh, support. So we had various stakeholders, either innovation experts, beneficiaries, also public authorities. And in this way, uh, the solutions were able to better address the needs of home care beneficiaries because we always talked to older people, to people with disabilities, to children, parents of children with special needs, to actually, we asked them, what do you need to have better and high quality care and how to help you stay in their, your familiar surrounding. Now the process itself, the lab process was based first on experimental learning. So basically what the social service providers noticed what was missing and also by talking to beneficiaries. And there was always trial and error uh, as we attempted to test prototypes as early as possible with the different users and experts. And the lab programs that we used design thinking approach to innovation. So basically, we integrate the needs of people, possibilities of technology, and what is required for business success. And the labs, uh, so we had a lab in Austria, Germany, Hungary, um, Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, Moldova, Bulgaria, and Romania, unfortunately not in Slovenia. And they, they took from six to 12 months and we allowed teams to work independently on their solution. And first we of course identified a particular need, uh, either 
the, maybe it was a meal, meal on wheels, maybe it was nursing in a rural, rural area, maybe it was a washing of clothes in a rural area. Then we try to understand the root causes of these needs and try worked on ideating the solutions. Then we rated the ideas and started prototyping. Then we tested the prototypes and developed the business model for the solutions. And then we worked on pitching the prototypes to business, uh, to potential business partners and investors. And in nine labs, we had more than 200 social entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs taking part. And they developed 57 home care innovations. Uh, for example, 16 were digital, 10 were focused mo mostly on supporting increase of support staff. So either um, they were either uh, programs to help more uh, to teach informal caregivers or they were um, support structures in the neighborhood so elderly could uh, call for help and the volunteers would come and help them, take them shopping, bring them something to their homes, things like that. We also had uh, 12 that were focused entirely on empowering the local community. So I, it was either an app that gathered uh, volunteers from the local community that would each day visit a person to see how they're doing, things like that. And 13 of these 57 home care innovations, they already got funding to go to further develop and to enter the market. So we are re really happy about that. Now, what we noticed during the work of the project was that we had a lot of social service providers taking part. And either, uh, and these were most nurses or also people from municipalities that work in the social sector they had to do a huge jump in thinking about social innovation because they don't they don't know what that is it's it's really strange for them the whole design thinking process is really yeah it's something completely different to what they're used to um and second worry they always had was financing how do we get funding for our ideas they had a lot of ideas they because they work with beneficiaries they know what is missing but their idea sometimes, well, you need to, you would need to address the not you or not only your own country or local community, you would have to address the Europe, European Union as a whole to change something. So uh, this is why we noticed and we also pre started preparing a strategy that noted that we need to have good support infrastructure for social innovation. Um, now, we also noted that you need to develop a variety of different solutions uh, for support system for informal caregivers, either by recognizing their work through payments or enabling better working conditions uh, or enabling uh, more daycare services. So basically they could uh, bring their own, their elderly or children with disabilities to a daycare for a couple of hours maybe take a rest or do something that they really need to without worrying about their uh, well, beneficiaries or their family. And we also um, try to strive to go, go towards digital more. So uh, to get more digital applications because we are seeing that during COVID, we all, we all went digital. And it's also, if you mix elderly with youth, so we, we did that. So we tried to mix uh, children with their grandparents. And when children explained how application work, it, it works much better. They understand much quicker how to use an app. And actually Caritas Vienna, they prepared an app called Kukuk. It was uh, what a child suggested the name. So Kukuk, you know what Kukuk means, hiding. And the app is designed to um, basically unite uh, older people that are home alone and they wish to uh, but they do not, not have a car or someone to bring them uh, to their to some to basically to join or talk with some, with their um, family or their friends and they can just enter the app and it's really well designed big buttons uh, huge fonts 
and you can just press I wish to talk with someone and then your avatar brings you to a room and you can easily talk with someone and it's uh, possible to use on laptops, on mobile phones or on uh, iPads. So, I mean, I could go further on because we did an, an analysis of needs in 10 countries of the Danube region. And we noted that loneliness is a huge problem, of course. So we tried to integrate as many community-based social inclusion activities as possible. There is a huge demand for improvement of living conditions of beneficiaries, uh, either through digital application or things like we talked about tools for cognitive training or for answering emergency cases because these these tools could uh, reduce the bureaucracy through digital care documentation and they could also increase care time uh, or more social uh, social community building we also noticed that there's yeah there's a need for improved accessibility to home care offers in rural area uh, areas. This was especially noted in Moldova, Romania, Bulgaria. There is a general lack of care uh, professionals to deliver home care. And yes, as you all mentioned already, there's a lack of preventative measures to avoid early care dependency. So new offers need to be provided and developed. This is, for now, this is it. We are also preparing um, and finalizing a strategy paper to basically promote innovation structures in home care. And we hope to publish it in a few weeks. But yeah, we again uh, identified four key challenges in the field of home care innovation, which again is lack of, lack of support structures to create new innovations. Uh, the, la the landscape for, for funding is fragmented and or it's not even available, especially this is especially seen in countries like Serbia, Romania, Moldova, Bulgaria. In Slovenia, it's okay for now, but it's quite mixed and you have to really search for that. Um, this is a big issue that this always discourages people from trying to work on their business idea that will address home care. Uh, again, there is also a lack of mechanisms that would integrate home care innovations in the financing system, and there are no interregional structures that we also noticed. So on European level, we do not have a structure or process that would enable learning from other countries, so what other countries developed already and how they solved a certain problem, and other countries would actually would be a would actually address, uh, contact this this structure and get ideas that's it doesn't exist and i think uh, i think uh, your project would actually could be that connecting point a point or a structure hopefully i mean why not that that is all from my side uh, yeah lots of things to discuss so i'm happy to answer any questions thank you very much <clears throat> Uh, I think you're very much right. Uh, we saw the gap, and this is why this project is being created. And uh, I'm sure we are going to connect also with other regions uh, to to be together. We are stronger. I see that Katarina has a question. Yes, uh, just to continue. It's a, just a, a remark. Some remarks on Anna's uh, what Anna said. And thank you for pointing out these issues. I want to say it's a traumatic experience for me because I had older, pe uh, older parents. Uh, they're not, uh, they, they are dead now, my parents. And I faced this uh, when they got older. In Greece, you know, there's no policy as such. We have uh, lots of, uh, we have some private uh, institutions or clinics, as we say and uh, some public uh, um, homes, but uh, not so many. And what I and I realized, apart from the housing that had so many problems, you know, and all this, it's lack of professionals. In, in Greece and in other countries I know, that I know, we try to find women coming from other countries that they are not qualified. They just left their countries to make some money. They don't they don't know how to, to to take care of older people and that's that's a very that's a very dramatic experience for the family 
and for the seniors and it's not a good quality not a good standard aging at home so i think we should work on this that we need also professionals people that they really know how to take care of older people at homes this is i think a, a very big issue and um, thanks for saying but i wanted to highlight it was a very bad experience for me really okay thank you any other suggestions or questions so we, in all areas, we found out that uh, curricula should be updated or changed or adapted. And now we have uh, two representatives from Ljubljana University. Um, I, I don't know to whom give a word, to Anna Maria or to, to Simon, uh, uh, but okay. Yeah, actually Go this ahead. was kind of a crisis management uh, building up the presentation so actually I will start and then Anna Maria will continue and at the end I will finish again so your professor is forgetful um I think that we were <laughs> over we were we were overloaded because we had the final project event in Ljubljana last week so we were really occupied with that um I'll try to present a brief, brief, very brief. Just overview. brief and just the results. Yes, thank you. Uh, the C4Care project, which was uh, intended for social innovation for integrated healthcare uh, of the aging population in Adrian regions. The title says nutritional care. Um, I would just like to emphasize that it was covering a lot of wider topics, for example, that were also mentioned today. Uh, we could say accessibility to healthcare services in remote areas. Uh, which was particularly problematic in Slovenia and uh, from our colleagues in Greece. Well, we engaged with digital technologies, so telemedicine and so on. Uh, we also touched upon the aspect of aging at home, so community solutions, adapted housing, um, farms where seniors can live uh, within their own community. And we tried to also propose a gerontological center that would be kind of an organizational unit taking care of this. Um, here, it was an international project. We had seven countries, so Slovenia, Italy, Croatia, Bosnia, Greece, Montenegro, and Serbia. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but in every country, there was a pilot project. Um, in Total, we had more than 10 of them that was intended to be implemented with some specific solution um, that will make life easier, better, uh, especially for the elderly uh, that are the primary recipients of integrated care, so to say. Um, why we were dealing with this is because the, the dem demographic uh, structure of the European Union and the Adrian region is changing. So we are increasingly coming with an older population. Um, and now, as mentioned, the project is in the closure phase. Uh, we also got some uh, words of that we are an example of good practice from the European um, Commission or the JS Secretariat. Um, what was important is that this was not a typical research project. We were more oriented towards practice and actually making some recommendations for policy making. Um, now, Anna Maria, you can continue. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much, Simon. Um, so we had different social innovations because the subject of the uh, our project was really broad. Um, but to focus on nutrition, um, we had one pilot which was delivered by Institute Josef Stefan, and it was about um, preparing application or program how to plan nutrition. For uh, patients in hospitals, they started with a nutritional application program um, in elementary schools, and then they um, broadened into hospitals. Their aim is also that it would be useful for nursing, nursing homes and also for home environment. Now we are coming to the subjects of our webinar today. 
So uh, it was a program that was established also before our project began, began, but we had an opportunity to evaluate and to compare also with other IT solutions with other countries. Uh, we can go further, Simon, please. Um, so, um, even if the today's webinar is about aging or healthy aging in a home environment, we are very aware that with aging, um, then people become also more fragile and uh, they there can be uh, also some chronic illnesses or other injuries. Um, and this is why we focused also on dementia on dementia in residential homes and also on dementia in uh, nursing homes, where we had um, we had uh, finished also one research which was then uh, published in Frontiers in Nutrition, and it is about uh, about connection between nutrition, congruent care, and also antipsychotic therapy with uh, well-being of residents with dementia and care homes. Um, why we choose this subject? Because Slovenia is very well known and it is, this is not a good result, something that we could be proud of. Um, in very uncritical measuring of antipsychotics for old people, for all people uh, that are 65 years old or above. So uh, this is really very important research and we can see about dementia well um, if we want to improve the possibilities for old people to age in their homes we also have to be aware of dementia and to recognize the signs of dementia we can see that one in five people have dementia at the age of 65 and one in three people aged over 80 or more. So this is very common when people get old um, and dementia is very tightly connected also with nutritional problems. Uh, there can be some problems with preparing simple meals or forgetting that they already have eaten or compulsive eating or um, mm, uh, or forgetting to eat. So um, awareness about dementia is very important in aging in home environment. About the Surrey, we have invited 10 homes from um, public homes with which developed congruent care and also uh, homes with which didn't um, develop congruent care. We wanted to compare the results between those two. We had five homes with congruent care, which responded, and also seven homes without congruent care. Um, this doesn't mean that the homes with congruent care are, uh, are better than the homes uh, without congruent care, because it is uh, not so easy to compare those two homes. So, um, we had uh, interviews and also focus groups with, uh, with uh, management and also with caregivers. And then we compared what, what factors are there uh, focusing on. on. This can be the temperature in the, um, in, um, in the institution, the noise factor, then smelling. Uh, well, all senses that are connected also with our well-being. The approaches um, by which nursing homes increase the well-being of their residents are different from what we could saw. We could saw that uh, homes with congruent care involve much more about choosing what kind of food food residents want to eat. Uh, in homes without congruent care, the food were, was only served on one plate, everything all together. So this is an uh, important um, distinction between those two for residents, for their well-being, 
if they can choose, if they can tell what would they like to eat, if they can choose at what time would they like to eat breakfast. Uh, do we uh, also, uh, are we aware about the food that people uh, were used to eat in their youth? Because this is very important in people with dementia because the short-term memory is forgotten it's and gone. people... Yeah, people are going then also uh, to their youth. We can go further to Postinelli. Um, we have to be aware of food choice, about pre preferences for um, every individual, about eating behavior, eating habits, and about food intake that we give people who are in home environment or in nursing homes that they can uh, take with finger food, something uh, like... Um, pieces of fruits or candies and so on. So uh, if we go to recommendations, uh, there was a significant decrease uh, in adverse interactions between residents, a lower agitation of residents toward the evening and a deeper connection between carers with residents. Uh, if we go only to the last slide of this, you can take a look at the article, which is open access and frontier set nutrition. This is very important. If we take in uh, consideration also nutrition care, uh, and we go to congruent nutrition care with people in dementia, with dementia, we can see that there is significant decrease in taking antipsychotics for people which uh, have dementia or also other people with our age 65 and more. This was not intent to decrease antipsychotics, but it was uh, an effect we, um, which, effect. which finalized the uh, better care. So um, if we just go to conclusion of our C4 care, some, Simon will take and um, finish our presentation. Yes, well, I will try to go back to the scope of the project. We had 21 proposed actions in the action plan for Slovenia. It covers a wide range of activities, so from dementia, telemedicine, nutrition, um, healthcare issues, and so on. Um, and now we are in talks with the ministry that we will try to do this together so that it's not something that is a strategy uh, in a desk in an office, but that it's something that's actually implemented in practice and that will actually make a change for the elderly. And that is also why at the university we uh, established this multidisciplinary research and development center for social innovation for active and healthy aging, because we want interdisciplinary collaboration uh, covering multiple aspects, including nutrition. So for example, up until now, we have seven or eight faculties and biotechnical faculty is especially covering the aspect of nutrition in relation to the elderly population. And I also think related to dementia, there was one specific action uh, from our colleagues from the Institute of Joseph Stefan, where they try to increase the availability of information tools and data for planning nutrition and raising awareness of the importance uh, of nutrition. So basically, this also um, goes hand in hand with training on the use of ICT tools, uh, where we know that we have to be especially careful with the elderly because they maybe need a bit more time and a different approach um, into how they get the knowledge that they need that, to use those tools in practice. Um, so if you want to catch up, if you would like to know anything more about C4 Care Project, maybe to get better overview of what was presented also today, you can follow the links that are provided or maybe watch even the presentation movie on the following link where the project is uh, clearly explained. And there's also another movie which clearly explains all of the pilot activities that were carried out during the project lifetime. So uh, from us, thank you very much up until now. And if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you really very much. Uh, I think all the presentations show that we are working on similar issues, but each from their own viewpoint, and that we should really join forces to not to reinvent the wheel, but to go forward from and learn from each other.
I think it was all very, very interesting. I may have a short question for Anna still. Did you find in the project that there were different cultural, the, the, uh, see cultural differences and different needs in uh, different regions in the, uh, of, the, of the partners in the project? Uh, well, yes and no. What we saw was mostly um, different stages of development, really. So we're talking about Germany, of course, is really well developed. Also Austria, uh, Hungary, Slovenia, Croatia, a bit less. And then we have Moldova, for example, which or also the rural areas of Bulgaria and Romania. Yeah, they did have no nothing no support structures for uh, innovation whatsoever uh, they are really lacking in support for home care so um, financing is almost non-existent the staff is moving so they are experiencing huge brain drain uh, because yeah support staff that should be working in their countries they're usually moving I well to north to either Scandinavia or Germany. So this is a big issue. What we also noticed is the um, difference in education levels. So we have a huge gap between uh, education, so nursing education in Germany, uh, Germany, Austria, or uh, even Slovenia really. And then with Serbia, uh, Bosnia, they are trying to fix, the, fix this because uh, of course, when you enter European Union, you have to have certain standards. They're working on that. And within the project, we actually, um, in uh, Novi Sad, uh, in Serbia, we worked on establishing a program, social innovation in nursing. So they will be there, they, they will have a subject. So a half, a one semester subject on social innovation in healthcare, really. So, We'll see how that goes. Big impact. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the question is always in education. You know, you have to start preparing programs, and it ta it takes years to change the programs. If there is no support from ministry, from the government, you get nowhere. So this is why we're moving so slowly. We don't have enough support staff. Nursing programs are really small. Oh, everyone knows how how badly they are paid. So who will enter nursing or care if you get terrible paycheck? Mm, yeah, but we did we did see um, different levels of development. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anna Maria and Simon, the, is your research institute going to be connected quite closely with the Ministry for the future or for the Ministry of Labor? Uh, to implement the, your outcomes into the policies? Uh, we actually had a meeting at the Ministry of Labor. I'm not quite sure how it's titled today in full. Uh, it will be different tomorrow anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> that, That's true. Um, they actually said that our strategy of um, longevity of the society or Strategia do Gujive Drujbe that it's some fundamental document that they wanted to go hand in hand with our efforts and that they would like to, if we can include uh, our action plan in some specific terms to what is related to that strategy and then they are very much uh, interested that it can be implemented in practice so I think that's in the next year or so. No, super. And learning from each other is really very important. So I would like to invite you to be in touch also in the future in the endeavors of this project. And uh, we hope that after Senior Reconnect, we are getting uh, to a further steps in uniting uh, the policies or, or practices and learning. So hope for I hope for the long-term uh, collaboration. Caroline, do you have? Yes. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I think we are a, a little bit late, so, so, late, so let's um, close uh, this workshop and, and, and thank you all of you to, for the um, great, great uh, inputs and, and experiences. Uh, I think uh, if possible to, to share with us your presentations and, and maybe uh, to exchange what we will uh, do in this project and what we, you are doing or what you have done in, in yours uh, would be uh, really um, important. Um, to very quickly mention the next steps of, of Senior Connect project, uh, which uh, could be of interest for you. Uh, we already have um, mapping of, of um, civil economy stakeholders uh, open. Um, the objective is obviously to, to better uh, connect uh, stakeholders from the different uh, partner regions, but also uh, broader in Europe. Um, we will soon start a SWOT analysis um, in uh, each of partner regions, uh, as well as in, in, in Europe. And uh, we will host, we will organize a, a dissemination event at the end of this year, uh, in November, in Galicia, uh, in the framework of a broader event um, uh, organized by our partner in Galicia, and we will uh, send you all that this uh, information after after today's meeting, and uh, let's keep in touch for uh, future collaborations. Thank you all. Thank you all again. Thank you, Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. have a nice day. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Alenka. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.